We've got uh, office layoffs. So we didn't talk about Friday because I wasn't here Friday. Over 100 layoffs, which would be 12% of the workforce. Virtually all employees, there were no wrestlers, although they did lay off Dana Warrior. She's not uh, working there anymore. But uh, the analytics department was gutted. They got rid of this Jamie Horowitz bloke who did not have mm. a stellar reputation. No. And, uh, yeah, 100 people. But, you know, this was expected. This is exactly what happened when Endeavor got UFC. And uh, it's just redundancy across two different organizations. And it was going to happen. As far as talent, I don't know. I guess we're going to find out what happens with the talent. But what we do know is it does appear that Jade Cargill is heading to WWE. And uh, and this story is very interesting for a multitude of reasons. Number one, I was thinking about this today. I actually don't think that there is any wrestler on the AEW roster that was more protected than Jade Cargill. Can anybody name one? Was there anybody in all of AEW that was more protected than Jade Cargill? As far as wins and losses go, no. I don't think okay. there is anybody. Character-wise, they had some rough moments at times, but she was always put up as a, a star. I mean, yeah, the closest you can get is, is uh, well, Moxley's, you know, Moxley, yeah, I guess he's up there, and and yeah. uh, and MJF. But, I mean, they both done multiple jobs. I mean, literally, she did no jobs forever. She did one job. Well, she was never in peril. She was never on the downside of usually anything verbal or anything like that. When you include the whole package, yeah, I mean, she was the most protected. She went home for four months. She returned and did one job and left. And no, even CM Punk was not protected as as much as Jade Cargill was. So anyway, the point is, you know, the most protected wrestler on the roster is now headed to WWE. And the question, obviously, is, well... Are they going to go to? The, are she going to the main roster or is she going to developmental? And if you've been watching NXT lately, which you should be, it's uh, much different now. I mean, they've got uh, you know Dana is there. She's getting paid main roster money. She's a regular there. Dom is there regularly. Rhea, Becky's the NXT champion. I mean, you can pay her main roster money and have her spend a fair amount of time in NXT. And, you know, from talking to people in AEW, I mean, the fact of the matter is she is probably going to need to spend some time in in NXT because for most of her big matches, I mean, she practiced for weeks before she went live and, uh, you know, move for move. This is not what they do on the main roster. And to work on the main roster with the main roster women doing those matches live, she's going to have to do things differently then she's done it through her entire career. So I don't know what the plan is, but she ain't going there for, you know, developmental money. I know she wanted a lot of money from AEW, and whatever she wanted, they didn't pay her. And WWE is obviously going to pay her a fair amount of money, both, you know, because she ain't coming in without it, and also because this is another... To a much lesser degree, but it's another Cody. It's someone that we have taken from the competition that was pushed very, very hard. And we're going to make sure that uh, she gets paid and and becomes, you know, somebody for us. So I'm not sure what's going to happen, but, you know, they've been making main roster plans for her. So she may be in both places, for all I know. But uh, she's going to get a good amount of money to go there. And we'll see what happens with Jade Cargill in WWE. With two weeks, see, it, well, you know, with Jade, it's how much does she really want to be in it? You know, how much does she really want to be in this thing, you know, with a kid at home and everything? Because the schedule is going to be far better in AEW. They're going to ask for a lot more out of her in WWE in the, in, in the ways you're talking about. You know, NXT brought up as a hybrid third brand. She could be fine there. Here's the other thing. What do you really want to use her for? You know, because... She could wrestle 30 times a year 
you know, and be on TV every single week, but only wrestle 30 times, wrestle every two weeks, and then once on the pay-per-view if you need her there or something like that. It depends on what kind of character she comes in as. Does she come in as the women's division? Do you slide her in because of Cody and Brandy? Do you do you wink at that on her way in and you do something there? I mean, is she going to be aligned with anybody it's again, I I want to see kind of where she comes in. If she's just coming in as a wrestler, Jay Cargill, yeah, to me, you put her in NXT, you do as much as you can to protect her there, get her as much work as you can in Florida, doing those house shows, doing these. They had a show in Boise, Idaho, you know, where Tiffany Stratton and Becky Lynch work because they were doing a super show there after they were in Colorado. Perfect show for a Jade Cargill to be on and, and get some reps in. Do you do that sort of thing and protect her for a while? I think you can do that. But again, if you're bringing her in as a hybrid character and the money reflects that because that's all she really wants to do, but you figure you can get something out of her because of how she looks. I mean, again, there's a lot of, you know, things that they could do, especially, again, they like groups and units. And again, how often... Do a lot of these people work? You know, I, I, again, she'll work a lot more in WWE than she did in AEW. But again, if she's a different type of character, not just a wrestler, you won't have to worry about it. Sam Punk was a commentator for Cage Fury Championships, North Dakota on UFC Fight Pass. They joked that uh, he was back with cause. And then Sam Punk made a comment about how he had a lot of spare time for the next two months. So, of course, that was a... He's trying to make you think that he's going to show up in Chicago at Survivor Series. And he might. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess we'll see. But it actually got a lot less traction than I expected it to this weekend. I thought that people would be going crazy about that line, but they didn't. So... Yeah, wait till it gets closer. We'll see what happens. I mean... It'll get whipped They're going to be frenzy. there. Yeah. They're going to be there. The, the speculation, again, it just depends on how much takes hold and if people have any CM Punk fatigue. But I think as it gets closer, even if they could come out and say no, he could come out and say no, people are still going to expect him to be there or want him to be there or think that he's going to be there or whatever. So, yeah, I think the thing will pick legs back up again. I'm surprised today and not a lot of people or everybody's just kind of rolling their eyes at the report that CM Punk not looking for any legal action against AEW and anything like that right now. So, you know, that seems to be something that people have just kind of shoulder shrugged off. So maybe there is a little fatigue right now, but will WWE fans get excited before they're in Chicago? Probably. You know, I got to say that I, if, I, if, I, if you ask me my gut feeling right now, I would say that I don't think that CM Punk and WWE have communicated at all. Because to me, let's say that they've uh, agreed in in uh, whatever the term is, that he's going to debut in Chicago at Survivor Series. Why in God's name would you hint at that on, while well, doing commentary in an MMA show? That doesn't even make any sense. Like, when he was going to debut in Chicago for AEW, I mean, he didn't say anything. Radio absolutely dead silent. So I don't know why uh I don't know why he would would say that if that was actually like a plan right now. I think he's I think he's trying to get people talking and uh we'll see what happens. Far off. Look, I don't even it may not have been to even get people talking. You just know they're gonna talk anyway, so you go ahead and you get it out of the way, you 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 know, self depreciating or whatever, you 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 say that and then you move on because that's all apparently that's ever said during those shows. You know, we hear that much of it and then we never hear anything else from his commentary the rest of the night, so you know. I think he gets blown out of proportion. It's like the, the him stabbing himself under the desk where it's like, this isn't news, people. Like, it's just somebody Actually, it's doing news a, the way he did it. Well, I was going to say. I heard the most a, from other wrestlers, not from fans. It's more news to older wrestlers because They're of They're like, of what is he whole... doing? God. Za. It's a. Uh, Jiminy well. Christmas. So he's <laughs> taking that, uh, that uh, Abby Fork approach to it. No, I. Have you? I don't think I've seen that since Wahoo McDaniel and Abby and guys who have that type of of scar tissue on their head. I've seen those guys do that very quickly, but I don't. I haven't seen something like that from a dude like Punk. That was a surprise. You know, uh, you ever leave a check mark in somebody's forehead, Brian? What? 
And then Anthony Bowens starts talking about Mr. Ass. <laughs> He's in tears talking about Mr. Ass. One more time, he says, from your couch at home, scissor me, daddy ass. I wish they would have said something like, we called him on the ass phone. Remember how Gorilla Monsoon had the banana phone? Yeah. I just imagine a phone, an ass phone that they oh, used to call Billy I'm going to regret this Google search. <laughs> <laughs> For an article on Vice from April of 2016. <clears throat> the secret world... Of tiny phones that go inside your butt. Oh, really? Well, that's that's not quite what I was expecting. Nor, wait a second. There's an article on this. Can you can you send me this article? Okay. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a minute. Now, if you hello, told me, hello, hello. Craig, please. What are we talking about? I don't know. Wrestling Dynamite. or something. Okay. Collision. Collision. House of Black versus Darius Martin in action and ready of Lee Johnson. That's where you keep the phone. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, guys. Did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.